Yes, uh, excuse me, I might have had a one too many vodka martinis, so if, I, if it all goes a bit wrong, I apologise in advance. Um, so, yes, the world's greatest theme tune, James Bond. Um, when I was ten years old, uh, I remember watching TV, and it probably was about Christmas time, because that's usually when they put the Bond films on, and I, I saw this for the very first time. Or not. <laughs> So that is the opening sequence for Goldfinger, um, and you know, obviously it was created by a chap called Morris Binder, who did, I think, almost half of the James Bond title sequences over over all the 25, well, soon to be 25 films, and um, it, it kind of just instilled something in me. I mean, obviously, I like the film, the coolness of James Bond, all this stuff, but the music really just spoke to me in some way. And it created this kind of lifelong obsession with that particular theme tune. Um, this, this is actually the Korean album of Live and Let Die, which I think is just a, a really nice piece of artwork. But so a couple of years later, um, I went into a local bookshop that was run by Brian Forbes, uh, a late film director. And he was having a clear out. They were doing a kind of a sale at the back of the shop. And uh, I bought uh, these two albums off of him. Uh, Goldfinger and Thunderball, and I played them incessantly, you know, on the vinyl, just listening to them and getting the riffs and the rhythms and understanding. What I really loved about them was that they, kind of the way that um, the composer interspersed the sort of James Bond theme into the incidental music and also into the actual theme tunes as well, so into the title songs. Um, and so, you know, I, I bought these with my pocket money and, and we're, we're playing those endlessly. Um, and as I dug deeper into this kind of world of, of James, the James Bond theme, I started realising that there are kind of like loads and loads of weird cover versions of it. I mean, there are literally hundreds from uh, this kind of techno, dubstep, heavy metal, country and reggae, and hip-hop artists, and, and other people like Glenn Campbell, Barry Adamson, The Art of Noise, Hank Marvin, The Scarlights, uh, Moby, and the epitome of pop culture reference, uh, The Crazy Frog. They've all done cover versions of the James Bond theme. Um, but my favourite, I think, or my favourite cover is this one by Selector. James Bond! The killer! You're going to hear a lot of James Bond theme tune tonight, I'm just warning you now. <laughs> Now there's something very funny about the, 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 the theme tune, it just fits reggae and ska perfectly. There's just something about the rhythm and the tempo of that. But it's also been sampled in over 120 different songs from things like the Wu-Tang Clan's One Blood Under W, Public Enemy's Game Face, the Beatles' 1965 Help album opens with it, um, and it was the inspiration for Johnny Rivers' uh, Secret Agent Man, obviously, and uh, the, whole, the whole tune on that, which was a, a, a direct homage to Bond. Now, if I asked most of you who composed that theme tune, you'd probably say it was this man, John Barry, um, which would be a reasonable assumption, because if you look on the albums, it says, music composed and conducted by John Barry. Um, but actually, it was this guy, Monty Norman. He was the, he was the man behind it. Um, now, he was a composer and a, a songwriter. He'd written songs for Cliff Richard, Tommy Steele, Count Basie, uh, and he'd written several musicals. He's won an Ivan Novello. So he's, you know, a very well-respected composer. Uh, and he also did the music for Expresso Bongo, a great sort of uh, 60s film that was uh, kind of a vehicle for Cliff Richard. Um, but the, what I love about the James Bond theme and why it's so good is it's so simplistic. It's the only piece of music I've ever actually learned on the guitar. Uh, so it, you know it's got to be pretty simplistic, you know, but it's really effective. And again, here, here's the actual sheet music. You can see at the top it says, by Monty Norman, just about. It's a bit blurry. Um, so it was uh, recorded on the 21st of June, 1962, um, using five saxophone, nine brass, and a rhythm section. 
And the guitar rift, the famous uh, dun, 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 that everyone knows, was played by Vic Flick on a 1939 English Clifford Essex Paragon Deluxe guitar. If nothing else, that's just a great name for a guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, and all he got paid was about £6, £7.50, round about that, for, for his session piece. For, you know, what went down in history is, is kind of like probably one of the most famous guitar riffs. Uh, and it was Vic, actually, that played the guitar at the beginning of the, the Help album um, for, for the Beatles. So Norman was credited, rightly, as writing the theme. And he's received royalties <laughs> since 1962, since he wrote it. Um, he's collected between 1976 and 1999. He got uh, £485,000, which worked out about 20, 21 grand a year. Which is not, not bad for a, a quick little ditty like that. Um, but the tune was arranged by John Barry. And this is where it gets really kind of interesting. Uh, he would later go on to compose uh, the soundtracks for 11 of the, the Bond films. Um, what happened was, it was basically that um, Norman pretty much phoned in what he'd done and the, the producers kind of liked what he'd done, but were going, it's, it's, it needs something else. It needs something a, a little bit more kick. So they brought John Barry in to kind of recompose it and mix it up a little bit. Um, and, you know, he put in the distinctive counter melodies and bridges to flesh out the arrangement. And I'll, I'll point out the bits that he did later on. Um, you know, it's... The courts have... Um, Norman has actually... Monty Norman has had to take the times to court twice uh, to declare that he actually was the composer of the music. Uh, I think once in 1997 and in 2001. And he won both times about 30 grand in damages off of the Sunday Times, who were claiming that it was John Barry. Um, so he's kind of a bit touchy about it, you know. <laughs> kind of understandable. Um, so, and it was described in the two-week court case uh, in London as one of the most famous pieces of music in the world. Um, I think, you know, I was chatting to someone earlier and saying, even if you haven't uh, seen a Bond film, you've probably heard the music and you kind of know the tune. Um, Norman described this distinctive rhythm guitar of uh, the James Bond thing as dum did he dum 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 Now he says, this is, this is a really interesting story, he says on his website that it actually was an old piece of music that he recorded for a musical, which was, um, it was a song called Bad Sign, Good Sign, sung by Indian characters in a musical based on The House for Mr. Biswas, which was a V.S. Naipaul novel, and um, based on the Indian community set in Trinidad. So he was, he was kind of commissioned to do this musical, and he was writing the book for it. And uh, so he said on the website, Unfortunately for us, the show was found out to be prohibitively expensive, and worse, in 1960, pretty near impossible to find an Asian and West Indian cast uh, in London. So the songs never got further than one or two live demos, and the show was sadly abandoned. With a heavy heart, I did what most composers do with their obsolete songs. I put my melodies for Mr. Biswas, including Bad Sign, Good Sign, into the bottom drawer, hoping that one day to resurrect one or two of them in some context. As time moved on, many people suggested I record the progenitor of the signature theme first heard in Dr. No. So, with musical cuts in the middle production area, and with the help of Mebob Nadim's evocative sitar uh, and embryonic melodies of the James Bond theme, for the first time in 45 years, it could be heard in their original form. So he released this album, Completing the Circle, and this is the original composition of where the James Bond theme tune came from, allegedly. This unlucky sneeze, and what is worse, I came into the world the wrong way round. Pundits all agree that I'm the reason why my father fell into the village pond and drowned. <laughs> <laughs> so you can hear the dum 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 Whereas Dr. No came out in 1962, which means even if you take into the account that uh, Monty Norman was working on a musical in 1960 for a book that had yet to be written, 
it doesn't seem to kind of ring a little bit true, and I'm, I'm kind of like a bit suspicious about that. I don't know if he's kind of done a bit of revisionist history there or something, so it's kind of interesting. But there, there's, there's more sources to the James Bond theme than, than just that part. Uh, this is a, a classic uh, 1938 um, Artie Shaw's orchestra, and um, it's a kind of a, a musical um, riff or theme called a vamp. Uh, and if you listen to this, you'll hear another element of the James Bond theme. In 2001, they actually brought in a, 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 a sort of an expert to talk about it. So there's a musicologist called Stanley Sadie uh, for the 2001 court case. And he kind of like broke down the, the whole sections of the theme to kind of explain, you know, who did what and, and this side of things. So it's identified, um, so although it's identified by John Barry's bebop swing jazz arrangement, Parts of it are heard through a Monty Norman score in Dr. No non-jazzy uh, guises. Um, so, you know, it was kind of basically sort of agreed that Monty Norman wrote it, but uh, John Barry kind of composed it. Um, but John Barry went on to obviously do a lot of other sort of music and incidental music for the James Bond series, uh, including one of this, which is one of my favourites. Now, this is the 007 theme. Uh, which he recorded in 1963, the year afterwards. He was kind of trying to put his stamp on it, you know, and get away from Monty Norman. Uh, and this was originally appeared in From Russia With Love. And I think this is equally one of my favourites as well. <laughs> It's a very different composition, but... If you, know any of John... just got that. if you know any of John Barry's stuff, it's got that very similar sort of sound to, you know, kind of like... A... And one of my favourites of his is uh, Beat Girl, which has got that very similar sort of tune, that twangy guitar, sort of 60s vibe to it. Now... Every single one of the James Bond uh, films so far has had a different arrangement. So each time it's come out, so reflecting the time that it's made. So Eric Serra's Goldeneye in 1995 and David Arnold's Die Another Day in 2002 are particularly bad versions. Um, they're, they're kind of like a bit too overproduced and to trying too hard with the techno stuff. But Mo Moby's one, which is a bit of a techno one, is actually quite good. I kind of like that one. Um, but then... It used to always be the case that there would be the opening sequence, then you'd get the little prelude, and then you'd get the, the, the music for the title music. Um, and, but the Casino Royale kind of gave up with that completely and went straight into the music, uh, straight into the theme tune. Not the theme tune, sorry, so the title music. But the reason they did that, ignore the screen. <laughs> I just didn't know how to stop that. There we go. So, um, the, the reason they did that is because they actually put the, the James Bond theme at the end because they saved all the business for, because it was Daniel Craig's first film, they had him saying the name's Bond, James Bond at the end of the film and they had the, the, the theme tune at the end. So they kind of flipped it over in that particular one. Um, you know, fortunately, uh, Skyfall and Spectre kind of returned to the traditional layout. And uh, if you look up, you can look up actually on YouTube, uh, someone has spliced all together gun barrel sequences, James Bond gun barrel sequences. So you can see them all back to back, all 24 of them, uh, should you so want to. <laughs> Sadly, people like me do. Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, you know, I, I haven't gone into the whole... Um, actual title songs like Goldfinger and, and Moonraker and all of those kind of stuff because that's, that's another talk in itself frankly but you know what's interesting is that when you do listen to those you can hear the James Bond theme woven into all of those tracks even Skyfall has, has the, the James Bond theme and, and certain riffs so it'll either be just the vamp or the dum dum dum, -dum or some, some element will be in there um, personally I think the irony is in its 55 year history of the films 
Uh, the only one that's won a, a number one and a BAFTA uh, was Sam Smith's uh, Writings on the Wall, which I think is terrible, but <laughs> it's just my opinion, you know, but, yeah, in comparison to them all. So uh, this is where we get to the fun part. So audience participation, you should have all found a kazoo on your seat. <laughs> you knew this was coming, right? Yeah. <laughs> so has anyone never played a kazoo before? Does, any, does everyone know? Oh, okay, you don't know. All right. Has everyone got a kazoo? Because we have extra kazoos if you need one. Okay, everyone's all right. So what you do with the kazoo, you don't use the thin end, you use the fat end. Yeah, so that's the first thing. And, and you don't blow, you hum. So you go. Perfect. Excellent. All right, so. So what we're going to do is... What Stanley Shady did in the, um, in the, 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 the breakdown, he actually broke down the entire basis of the, the James Bond theme uh, into sections. And this shows you how simple and easy the, 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 the thick tune is, but why it's so effective. So you start off with kind of two rounds of the band, which goes... <laughs> then the next thing is the guitar riff. Which is <laughs> and then you hit the semi descent. <laughs> then you go back to the riff. I'm not going to do that again. Then then you go back to the, the vamp. And this is where the point really that, that John Barry came into was the bebop, uh, and he put this swing in, so it went. <laughs> Uh, and then kind of repeated that twice, and actually you repeat it four times. Um, and then it goes to um, a different me um, melody, which is still bebop, which is... <laughs> then you hit the climax. <laughs> <laughs> then you go back to the band, which is... And then the, the, the riff... Uh, We'll play it on so we won't have it together. So, so if you remember the vamp is du, du, that's the first bit, okay? So you're ready? Yep. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>